TCU has a new signal caller on defense, former Boise State head coach and Oregon defensive coordinator. Also, former Boise State defense coordinator Andy Avalos will make his way to Fort Worth. We'll break it down next. It's Locked On Horn Frogs, your team every day. You are Locked On Horn Frogs, your daily podcast on the TCU Horn Frogs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked on Hornets, Andy Avalos, new defense coordinator for the TCU Horn Frogs. We have festive decor in the background here. Good to see you. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also, subscribe wherever it is you get podcasts and its audio variety. To catch everybody up, because a lot has happened in the last 24 hours, I do have an episode up that was launched on Sunday night. I apologize to the YouTube viewers. Had some video issues. I know, perfect timing. Uh, but Joe Gillespie was dismissed on Sunday afternoon, or at least the announcement became public on Sunday afternoon that TCU is moving on from Joe Gillespie as defensive coordinator, spent two seasons with the Frogs. Of course, first year was great, right? Go to the national championship game. Defense had some great moments, uh, a great game against Texas, really good first half against Michigan, some great second halves against Kansas State in the regular season, against West Virginia, um, stood up tall against Oklahoma. You get the picture. And that team, it was a defense that was very young, that was kind of reloading after the Gary Patterson era, didn't know what they were going to look like, and they improved. In 2022, um, expected better things. That did not happen, right? Or in 2023, I should say, expected better things. That did not happen, uh, culminating in the Oklahoma game, which was really a disastrous effort for the defense. They give up 62 points. That Josh Hoover pick six leads to 69 points. So Sonny Dykes moves on from Joe Gillespie. Feels like the right move. Felt like the right move to make uh, immediately after the season. Do not know what the delay was. It was odd timing. Not sure if Sonny had to really, you know, consider this over a few weeks. But it was strange because, I mean, the defensive staff was out there recruiting. And an interesting tidbit, um, Paul Gonzalez, Jamarcus McFarland, so Paul Gonzalez, safeties coach, Jamarcus McFarland, defensive line coach, and Carlton Buckles, the corners coach, all reportedly staying on staff even with this change at their respective positions. So you're not having a complete defensive overhaul. And the timing of this uh, dismissal, culminating with keeping some of the staff together, made me think that Sonny Dykes had this pretty much ironed out as far as who the replacement was going to be before everything went down. Because we're so close to the early signing window now. Transfer portal recruiting is in full swing. Have a couple commits that I'm going to talk about later in the show for the Frogs, one on the offensive line and one at the wide receiver position. But you're winding up high school recruiting. You're in the first window of the transfer portal, you know, recruitment period. So you got to make a move quickly. So come on down, Andy Avalos. And within 24 hours, we find out that Joe Gillespie is gone as a DC. His replacement's already been announced. And reportedly, you know, he's on the way and is ready to get to work. A crazy turn here in the last day or so. But that's where we're at. So who is Andy Avalos and what does he bring to the table? Head coach at Boise State, last three seasons. And really, up until this past year, had a good tenure there. They were seven and five in 2021, but went five and three in conference play, ten and four in 2022, eight and zero in conference play. They did end up finishing second in the Mountain West because they lost the championship game, I believe, to Fresno State. And then this past year, five and five, he's dismissed after ten games, and some reports and rumors of uh, dissension within the team. Team not really responding to him well. Boise State actually rallied pretty nicely after that uh, firing and and did a nice job to close the season. So there's some concern there, I would imagine. But Sonny Dyke seems to think he's done a really good job as a D.C. in the past because before he was a head coach, he was defense coordinator at Oregon. And before that, he was defense coordinator at Boise State. Played football at Boise State, was a linebacker there. He's part of the Pete Katowski tree. Pete's down at Texas now as the D.C. Uh, Justin Wilcox, also part of that coaching tree. He is there. Um, at California as a head coach now. What kind of defense does he run? It is a 3-3-5. My first thing I'll tell you, do not freak out when you hear that. I know a lot of you are scarred about the 3-3-5 because of what happened under Joe Gillespie's tenure. Let me say this. It's a very, very defense. What I mean by that is Avalos runs multiple formations, so he's not going to be in three down line sets all the time. And also, the 3-3-5 is a base concept for a lot of defenses across the country, and they do it very successfully. 
And a lot of them are not nearly as conservative as the 335 stack that Joe Gillespie has been running for the past two seasons. And, you know, the biggest issue I had with it while we while he was here, just the refusal to blitz, the refusal to put pressure on the quarterback, the refusal to try to confuse the QB with pre-snap, you know, motions or shifts or anything that would just make them a little more uncomfortable, right? And I, I felt like at times he left his secondary out to dry. Now, one one thing about this defense, and I was watching uh, the coordinator project, um, which I had dug on for the coordinator project this past offseason, talking about Kendall Browse. He also did a really nice video about Avalos. And he was talking about the different formations that Oregon gets in. They have some four down sets. They have three down sets. They have five defensive linemen on the line. But another thing that Avalos does that's kind of unique is sometimes he'll only have one or two guys on the D line with their hand on the ground. Now, before you freak out, the kicker to that is he'll have two guys standing up on the edge. So maybe two players on the outside of the tackle that aren't necessarily true defensive linemen. Maybe they're listed as outside linebackers, but they are edge rushers. Okay. And and you might have somebody over the center that's in more of a stand up position. So it's not hand in the ground or even somebody in a three technique. That means outside shoulder of the guard, you know, one technique. He's moving people around. He's trying to create favorable matchups. He's trying to create favorable matchups for his defensive linemen, which I I feel like that's a really big step forward because the D-line and a lot of uh, instances in the past couple of years has has basically been kind of asked, this is their responsibility, spill and kill, meaning take on blockers, take on double teams, try to get some push, try to reestablish line of scrimmage, allow your linebackers and safeties to come from different angles, read gaps, read motions, and, and make tackles, make good fundamental tackles. So your D linemen aren't exactly the stars of the show. You're not lining guys up outside the tackle a lot and saying, hey, pin your ears back and go get the quarterback. It's more, can you, you know, can you draw attention? Can you take on multiple lockers? Can you find a way to be disruptive and hold your gap in the run game? And so this is going to be a little bit different. Um, in that Oregon defense, they did a really nice job. They won the Pac-12 champion. That he was there with Mario Cristobal when Cristobal was the head coach. They won two Pac-12 titles in the years that he was there. Um, they He had them at ninth in the nation in 2019. The year before that, they were 49th in the nation. He coached Kayvon Thibodeau, uh, who was one of the best edge rushers in the country. And ended up being a top pick for the Giants and has done a really nice job in the NFL. And he would move him around a lot. Now, in fairness, TCU does not have difference makers like Thibodeau on the roster right now. So it was, it was cool to watch. Like you'd see uh, Kayvon lined up over the center, over the guard. He wasn't just always a traditional edge rusher. And sometimes those outside linebackers, they would drop back into coverage. He would use simulated pressures or disguise as pressures, meaning it, it would look like linebackers were coming or it looked like those defensive ends, stand-up edge rushers were going to come for the quarterback. And then the last minute, they drop back into some man concepts and they're uh, defending the pass. And he's sending safeties and linebackers from different angles behind them. And it's confusing the offensive line. It's confusing to the quarterback. You're trying to you're, you're trying to make the offense not trust their eyes, not trust their pre-snap responsibilities, and get people free <coughs> to win matchups and also get your defensive linemen in one-on-one situations with twists and stunts and different blitzes that allow them to win those matchups. And so uh, with guys like Marcus Deal and Dominic Williams, um, Tymon Mitchell, Avion Carter, Zach Chapman, like you have players on this roster now who are going to be asked to be more traditional pass rush sets and hopefully I'll lead to sacks. That's one thing that he's done really well through the years and through his different stops is create pressure on the quarterback, get QBs down to the ground. Um, and that's, I mean, that's huge because that hasn't been something that's been very prevalent the past few seasons since Sonny Dykes took over and he brought a, he brought in Joe Gillespie. So trying to create one-on-one matchups for the rushers on the D-line. He'll use those hybrid guys in coverage. Big emphasis on athletes at different positions. Um, guys that can come down in the box and be in run support, but also play in coverage. And that's, I mean, that's similar to what TCU has been doing currently 
is just different responsibilities and different things that he's going to ask them to do. And they have been in the past. A big emphasis on trying to confuse the offense, um, which I think is, is a big positive for this team because that wasn't something that they've been doing lately. So hopefully the D-line and you know the rest of the team is on board. We'll see what happens. I, I said yesterday, I said if I'm Sonny Dykes <clears throat> and this coaching staff, I'm making a lot of phone calls this week. And hopefully Andy Avalos is part of that and he's meeting with the guys individually as well. But you need to talk to Dominic Williams. You know, you need to talk to um, Jamal Johnson. You need to talk to Avery Helm. These difference makers on the defense. You need to talk to your young players that are going to be expected to take a step up and be bigger parts of the defense moving forward. Because these are the guys that have to buy in. And yes, there's going to be some roster turnover here. Now, honestly, surprisingly today, there's been a big influx of talent. And we'll get to that in a second too. But you're probably going to lose some current players to the portal. You might lose some high school commits. And maybe because of the timing of this and with how quickly this all went down, there wasn't a big transition period. It wasn't like you lost Joe Gillespie and it took a week or two weeks to find his replacement and guys got impatient and said, well, I got to move on somewhere else where at least I know there's some stability. Maybe with the way this all played out, there'll be a better chance that you can keep people on board. Right? Right? You can talk to these guys. But I would expect in the spring, there's going to be some changes. Because the bottom line is, there are going to be players on this team right now that they start practicing this defense. And it's it seems like on paper, at least a complicated defense to learn. So that's going to be part of this too. <clears throat> Maybe you have some guys that just don't, they kind of get a feel for what they're supposed to be doing. And they're like, I don't have a great, um, sense or idea of what I'm supposed to do. I don't feel like I'm a good fit here. Whatever the case may be. So you're going to ask some attrition. And that's okay. But as much as you can limit that as possible, that's a big thing. But I'm really happy with this move. Some names that I mentioned yesterday. Zach Arnett, former head coach at Mississippi State. Spent some time at San Diego State as their DC and head coach as well. Um... And then Doug Belk, who was at Houston for a long time and did a nice job, even though it felt like I had a dip last season and the jump to the Big 12 was a big deal. I know Dana Holgerson, you know, he was part of that whole team struggling as well. But this is a guy with a proven track record. Yes. I'll talk in a minute about how things went down at Boise State, what it could mean for TCU moving forward. But as the D.C. seems universally respected, aggressive scheme, and I think this is someone who can bring energy and excitement to the table. 42 years old to so relatively young. Um, and it also just feels like a, a, a hire where Sonny can say, okay, you got the defense, right? Like, not that he's going to be completely hands-off with it, but Sonny's an offensive guy, and I don't think he really wants to be super involved with the defense. Like, I, I think he wants to give that person the resources to do their job and do it well. At the end of the Gary Patterson era, we saw a coach that was very gifted at play calling on defense. Um, and it seemed like he was also trying to micromanage the offense and have an offense that was very complimentary with what he was trying to do on the other side of the ball. And it ended up just being kind of a jumbled mess. And so I, I feel like Sonny wants to give this to somebody and say, hey, this is your side of the ball. I'll get involved if I need to, but I would love for you to just take this ball and run with it and have some freedom to do what you need to do. Um, and if if Avalos can do that at a high level, then that's really beneficial. We'll talk more about this hire and uh, some big-time commitments for TCU as well coming up next here on Lockdown Horn Frogs. How did Sonny Dykes find Andy Avalos so quickly? How did he get this job filled so quickly? Well, he went to LinkedIn.com slash Lockdown College, and he posted that job for free. Did you not see it? Did you not see it there on the LinkedIn board? Andy just quickly uploaded a CV. I'm sure there were some uh, screening questions. Like on third and 15, would you rush more than three people? On third and 22, would you bring an extra blitzer? And it, it appears Andy checked yes. And so he ends up with the job. LinkedIn.com slash Lockdown College. LinkedIn, it's where you go to find work. 
Okay. It, it's just, it's the place to go. Everybody knows about LinkedIn. Hiring can be a high stakes adventure. It doesn't have to be. Make Have LinkedIn jobs. Make it easy for you at linkedin.com slash locked on college. They have a purple hiring frame available for you there. A bunch of qualified candidates, but you can also narrow down that search with the screening questions that I mentioned earlier. LinkedIn, it's a place to go to find work. It's a place to go to post your job and get a, a great pool of people that can take your business to the next level. Don't leave it to chance. Leave it to LinkedIn. LinkedIn.com slash locked on college. So why was Andy Avalos available? So he's a head coach at Boise State. First two seasons go pretty well. I mean, 7-5 and five in 2021, which is not exactly their standard. But 2022, they bounce back and go 10-4. and four. They don't win the Mountain West, but they go 8-4 and four in the regular – or 8-0 oh in the regular season in the conference. Uh, and then this year, really rocky tenure. And funny enough, he has a connection to a, a player that TCU is targeting the transfer portal, Eric McAllister. Um, and by the way, I should have mentioned the segment one. Jeremy Clark, uh, was on the report that Andy Avalos is going to be the defense coordinator at TCU. I should have mentioned that in segment one. My apologies. Uh, Horn Frog Blitz, great website. But Eric McAllister, receiver from Boise State, which I talked about over the last few weeks, had over 800 yards receiving last season, found the end zone a lot. Um, he's from Hazel, so there's interest there in TCU, local kid. And he did an interview with a Boise State media outlet because he left the team with a few weeks left in the season and basically let the coaching staff know, hey, I'm going to enter the portal. I, you know, I'm kind of done here. And he said that his relationship with Andy Avalos wasn't great. He didn't really get into details, so he didn't want to get into it, but that wasn't great vibe. You know, they didn't get along super well. And it appears that, was sort of shared by a lot of the team. Now, is that concerning? Yeah, it's somewhat concerning. I think a couple things here. One, losing brings out bad chemistry, right? Like when teams are losing, they get frustrated, okay? And Avalos seems to be a pretty intense guy, not in a bad way, just he is. Um, so I'm hopeful that this was just a rough environment for a team that thought they were going to be better than they ended up being, and people were having trouble buying in. <clears throat> now, also as a defense coordinator, um, he's going to be interacting with one side of the ball. He's not going to be uh, in charge of the whole team. And hopefully with some less responsibility, he'll be more affable and more personable, and maybe the guys will go along with him better. As far as what it means for Eric McAllister, I really don't know. I mean, I'm, in one hand – if he's going to play wide receiver, it's not like he's going to have a ton of <clears throat> one-on-one interaction with Coach Avalos on a daily basis. So maybe it doesn't bother him at all. Maybe it gives him pause. This feels like it's been in the works for a little bit, though. So I would imagine there were hopefully some conversations. But, I mean, ultimately, the defense has to get figured out. So if you think this is a guy that can get the job done, I don't think you can – as great as Eric McAllister is, and I would love to have him, you know, I think you just got to make the hire and then try to explain your thought process and hope that he can get on board with uh, the next steps, even with him on staff as the defense coordinator. One more thing about Avalos, and we'll move on to some other aspects of this. Um, and coverage. Runs a lot of cover one single high, meaning you have one safety back in the middle of the field. You bring another safety um, – into the box, they frequently call it the cover one robber. But again, a lot of emphasis on deception, switching up coverages. So he'll do different things with those safeties and linebackers and corners. So that, that safety that's playing single high is not always just playing the deepest part of the field. Sometimes he'll come up and try to uh, disrupt underneath routes. Um, a lot of cool things where they're rotating the secondary trying to make things happen. Again, I think really creative coach, uh, has some good ideas. I'm excited to see what he can do with this defense. I'm also just excited to see like what kind of players he's going to target in recruiting, both in the portal and the high school ranks. Hopefully more of an emphasis on pass rushers. 
Um, CSU's got a lot of long rangey corners. Is that going to continue? Physical safety play, you would think that would be something that's still at a premium. A lot of different options with this defense. Andy Avalos, new defense coordinator for the Frogs. TCU also got some commitments on the transfer portal of the day. Cade Bennett, San Diego State interior offensive lineman. He committed to the Horn Frogs. Last two seasons, Cade started 23 of 26 ball games for the Aztecs, all conference O linemen. He joins Carson Bruno, the La Tech uh, offensive tackle in this transfer portal class. Um, again, TCU trying to get better and more experienced up front. You're potentially losing four starters off the O-line from the previous year. You have to get more experience there. These are potentially bridge guys that can start next year or be available to play all a, sna- a lot of snaps while you continue to try to build up depth in the offensive line room again. Last season, Bennett had an 83.3 grade in pass protection, according to Pro Football Focus, which is one of the best interior grades of the nation. Didn't grade out as well in run blocking, so not necessarily a road grader, but really good in pass protection. And we saw last year as the year went on, big emphasis on you know keeping the pocket clean. They did a much better job of protecting Josh Hoover, and it showed up. And they were able to pass the ball really effectively. So maybe that's something they're kind of looking into now. Not airing it out all the time, but if we can do it well, if we can block it up, we can do more interesting things in the passing game moving forward. Um, he he said in an interview with uh, a, a newspaper in Arizona that he feels like his athleticism should fit well with his TCU scheme, run a lot of counter, inside zone, you know, pulling around the formation, um, getting across the face of the defensive lineman, moving in space. All those things he feels like he does well. Also said that NIL um, was a huge part of the choice. That's encouraging. Flying T-Club, getting involved and getting things done. It was down to TCU and Arizona State. He had interest from a lot of schools, but that was his top two. And he felt like kind of setting his mind of this process. So Cade was at Oklahoma State, and then he transferred to San Diego State. But he's from Arizona originally. And his initial thought was, well, I'll probably end up back home at Arizona State. But TCU visit blew him away, and so he's super excited to be a Horn Frog. Um, I love what they're doing in the trenches. Big emphasis on getting better in that area. Have to have it to have an effective, uh, really good offense going into this next season. Also, Braylon James, Notre Dame wide receiver, big physical target. Um, he kind of works out as a replacement for Cordell Russell, who was also a freshman this past year. Braylon was a freshman at Notre Dame, didn't really see the field much at all, but a lot of eligibility left, was teammates with Cam Cook at Stony Point. This is the type of guy you want to take a chance on in the portal. Young, can play, um, can develop, and you can basically plug him in the system and kind of treat him like an incoming freshman almost. Okay, let's get you up to speed. Let's see what you can do. Let's get you ready to contribute over the next few years. Um, DJ Allen, wide receiver at TCU, has hit the portal. It feels like receiver, and I don't know if this is just a TCU-specific thing, but it feels like wide receiver is the position group in the portal era where we're going to see the most shuffling year in and year out. Guys coming in, guys leaving, and there's no shortage of talent there. And I think Sonny Dykes and his staff do a really good job of evaluating that position group. So I'm not really worried about them having a talent deficiency there. It's just interesting that there's so much kind of moving and shaking that happens there specifically. Um, so DJ Allen to the portal, Braylon James coming in. We'll keep an eye on that Eric McAllister potential transfer. Cade Bennett joins Carson Bruno um, in that transfer class. The vibes are good right now, man. A nice couple days for Sonny Dykes and the staff. Makes a much-needed change defense coordinator. Brings in a guy that's well-respected in coaching circles. Brings in a couple of talented transfer players that can hopefully contribute quickly. And uh, also landed a high school commit today. So we'll talk about that next and wrap things up. It's Locked on Horn Frogs, your team. We do it here every day. All right, FanDuel, if you want to make some money, FanDuel is a place to go. FanDuel.com slash locked on. Go there and if you make a $5 money line bet, just five, just throw $5 down. And let's say you hit on that. $150 in bonus bets. $150 in bonus bets. 
for just a $5 winning bet. They also have an app that's safe and secure and super easy to use. You can bet on spreads, parlays, money line bets, whatever you're interested in, prop bets. FanDuel makes it possible for you. It'll make it easy for you. FanDuel.com slash locked on. Take advantage of that great deal. NFL games almost every night of the week. Get after it. FanDuel.com slash locked on or the FanDuel app. So three commitments today, along with Andy Avalos becoming the new defense coordinator for TCU and landing a couple guys in the transfer portal, Caden McFadden, safety from Texarkana, Pleasant Grove. Caden was originally committed to Duke, but left when Mike Elko decided he was going to go to Texas A&M. Uh, 5'11", 185, can cover in space. He's physical. Interesting timing. Um just because you you have this DC change going on, but seems excited to be a frog. Going to stay closer to home. Texarkana Pleasant Grove, really good program. Won a few state titles over the years, uh, and big physical safety play. That's what you want. That's what you need. Athletes that can both play and run support, and also cover. And so, according to two four seven Sports, TCU now has the thirty first ranked. High school recruiting class in the nation. <coughs> Excuse me. They've taken some chances with some high ceiling guys that haven't at this point been graded out or rated super highly, but they've also landed some big players. And I think McFadden's one of those. And if Mike Elko thinks you can play defense, that's a pretty big ring in door. See what he can do over the next few years when he gets here and uh, dons that purple jersey. Caden McFadden, new high school commit from Texarkana Pleasant Grove. Big news day, and we'll keep you updated on what else is going on in TCU sports all week long. It's Locked on Horn Frogs, your team every day.